This is KGW News at Sunrise. Next on Sunrise, the governor pleads for Oregonians to make the difficult choice now during the holidays to help us all get out of the pandemic sooner. We'll look at the guidelines Governor Brown announced for after the two-week freeze. Plus, we'll talk with a local doctor who's traveling during the holiday to help his fellow healthcare workers treat patients in Texas. I'm very thankful that, that people power through and make sacrifices not seeing their loved ones and staying home. And for the rest of our healthcare workers here working nonstop, making everyday sacrifices, we wanted to know what they're thankful for this Thanksgiving. Good morning and happy Thanksgiving to you and thank you for waking up with us. I'm Galen Etlin. We're going to be sharing some of your messages, letting us know what you are most thankful for. And we want you to keep sending those our way. Text us at 503-226-5088 and we're going to be airing them throughout the morning. Chris McGinnis is filling in on weather, joining us live at home. Good morning, Chris. Looking pretty quiet today. Yeah, it is. I think it's going to be a pretty nice Thanksgiving day weather-wise. And good morning and happy Thanksgiving to you, Galen. Live look outside. Obviously still dark out there. We've got some cloud cover, but that'll thin. 45 last check at PDX. Beaverton and Hillsborough sitting at 42. Uh, Forest Grove right now, 39. And the big picture across the state. We do have some chilly stuff right now. Eastern Oregon, Baker City waking up. To 21 degrees. All right, the forecast today with the turkey waving at you. Mostly cloudy this morning. Uh, we should see a few sun breaks this afternoon. I think we get up pretty close to 50 degrees or so. Sunset at 430. Uh, Galen, we have, I think, a foggy day tomorrow and some rain coming our way late tomorrow night and Saturday. I'll break that down in more detail coming up in just a few minutes. All right, Chris, thank you. Irresponsible behavior over Thanksgiving at best will only make the pandemic last longer. At worst, it will send one of your loved ones to the ICU. That's Governor Kate Brown delivering one last plea to people in the metro area ahead of Thanksgiving. Her message is make the hard choices now so we can get out of this pandemic earlier. The governor also announced some new guidelines for what activities will be restricted in Oregon moving forward. And it's based on this ranking here. Counties are considered anywhere from low risk to extreme risk based on their rate of viral spread. There are 21 counties considered extreme risk right now. Those are in red on this map, and that includes the Portland metro area. Now, those restrictions kick in next week and take the place of the current freeze. Some places like stores will see tighter restrictions, while restaurants will have a little bit more leeway. So even in counties where COVID-19 presents a more extreme risk, like Multnomah, Washington, and Clackamas counties, bars and restaurants can offer outdoor service. They can have no more than 50 people, a max of six people per table, and closing time will be 11 p.m. Liz Hanna turned her Northeast Portland bar, Mad Hanna, into a general store to survive the freeze. She's hopeful better days are ahead. The store has been open for a week. We've been making about $300 a day, um, which is uh, a very small portion, a very meager portion of what we were making as a bar. It's such a huge relief. I, I, can't, even, um, I can't even express the kind of gratitude I feel for um, for Governor Brown. Now on Monday, the OHA will determine which counties fall into which risk category. The new rules take effect the following Friday. Then the OHA will reevaluate county data every couple weeks and make changes. Now, for more than a week now, retail and grocery stores have reduced capacity under those new COVID restrictions, but it might feel like stores are still pretty crowded. Devin Haskins breaks down the current rules. When you need that last minute item to make the turkey dinner, you go to the grocery store. The holiday gift, maybe you head to a retail store. The bigger the store, the more people that you'll see inside. The smaller the store, well, you get the idea. It feels defeating on occasion, but at the same time, I know that we can provide a super special small boutique mom pop like atmosphere for the people that uh, appreciate that. Bailey Hansaker owns Modeo Resale in Hazeldell, a small women's boutique resale store. Under new restrictions, her shop can only hold about a dozen people, including staff. I believe strongly that the lockdown um, really did send more people back home, which means that they're not in our store. Um, so we felt it in immediately last week. The amount of people inside a store is based off the occupancy limit set by building codes. It varies store to store depending on the size. 
Oregon and Washington have set different capacity limits during the freeze. Oregon allows stores to have 75% occupancy, but Washington set the cap at just 25%. Here's an example. At the Rally Hills New Season store, normal capacity is 514, but with the 75% limit, they can have as many as 386 people inside, including staff. Whereas in Washington, the drop is more drastic. The Vancouver store, which holds 993 people, can now only accommodate 248 under the 25% cap. Other stores like Safeway say the 75% limit has not been an issue, and the 25% limit is usually higher than the average customer count. So while bigger stores can hold more people, it's the smaller ones that are feeling the biggest impact. Small business is, you know, really special. So um, for the extra moments you can take to support that versus the big guys, it, it means we get to keep our stores. So who do you call if you believe a store is violating the state's orders, whether it's Oregon or Washington? Normally you would call the fire marshal, but instead, because this is a state mandate, you would call that state's labor office like OSHA. In Vancouver, I'm Devin Haskins, KGW News. Gyms and other indoor recreation places like movie theaters will remain closed in the extreme risk counties as well. A gym in Salem has to pay a fine for defying the closure orders. The owners of Courthouse Club Fitness said they plan to keep their five locations open through the freeze, posting on Facebook they would not survive another closure. After initial warnings, the state fined the owners $90,000. That includes fines for multiple gym locations. The gym could also face daily fines moving forward if it does not shut down. Now, Thanksgiving probably makes you think more about the food than a good workout, but for many people, exercising is also a turkey day tradition. Unfortunately, this year, though, there are no turkey trot runs and in-person group classes are canceled. But Burn Cycle in the Pearl usually does a, a turkey burn, and later this morning, it will stream two turkey burn classes online to keep the tradition going. We do it because it's a celebration and everybody has a day off and it's gathering and it's connection and it's just, it's a reason to celebrate. Uh, and so um, this year it's a little bit different. $29 a month will get you unlimited burn movement classes online, which don't use bikes. Some of that fee even goes to charity. A lot of people are also setting up home gyms. Northwest Fitness sells exercise equipment and the owners say it has been tough to keep up with demand. And we're seeing return customers that maybe started this COVID thing with a set of dumbbells and thinking, well, the gym's gonna be back open or I'll feel comfortable in six months and you know, now here we are. You can still get your fitness on this weekend at a state park as well. Oregon is waiving day use fees at state parks that typically charge them. Now it's part of Green Friday and this year a lot of the special events are canceled, but you can go out to fish, clam or crab for free on Friday and Saturday. You do not need licenses or tags. A lot of people will not get to spend Thanksgiving with their families this year, including many health care workers like Dr. Jason Wells here from the Oregon Clinic. He traveled to Lubbock, Texas to help treat COVID patients. Hospital staff there have been overwhelmed with cases and asked for more help. Dr. Wells is one of several people brought in from out of state. You know, when I heard about it and heard kind of what the team was struggling through uh, at this point it was something that I, that I in my mind, I thought if, if we were in that same situation. Uh, I would hope people would come and help us out as well. Uh, and it was something again where knowing what everyone was struggling through, wanting to make sure that the patients were supported, but also the team uh, as well. Dr. Wells has been treating patients Absolutely. in Oregon since the beginning of the pandemic and will return next week. Now, with healthcare workers like Dr. Wells making so many sacrifices during the pandemic, we wanted to know what are they thankful for this year. Our Catherine Cook talked with some of them to find out. More than ever, we are grateful for healthcare workers. But this Thanksgiving, what are they thankful for? I'm thankful to, to have a job and to continue working in the capacity that I can. Brian Mills is a physician's assistant in Salem. The opportunity to serve is on his list of gratitude. So is time. I will remember the amount of time that I've had with my family and with my kids and how close we've gotten. Brian and other members of the Oregon Medical Association gathered to share what else they're thankful for over Zoom. It's how most of them will celebrate this Thanksgiving with extended family. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday. So I'm a little bummed out. Victor Tran is a first year physician's assistant student at OHSU. He's grateful for his family's health, 
but will miss the in-person reunions. Say, when did you start walking or when did you start talking? Like things like that. And I just, um, I have to do it through FaceTime, but hopefully next year I get to see them all. I got to tell them, you know, how much I miss them, give them a hug and uh, hopefully we can get through this rough time. Learning remotely is not how well, Victor or his classmate, uh, Lily Borneo Carrillo, envisioned their first year at OHSU, but they're increasingly thankful for it. Being able to see how is it that we can be part of the solution with everything. Lily is thankful for learning the importance of self-care so early in her career. It's something she recognized during these months of isolation. We're in the front lines and we're going to be in the front lines all the time. So if we're not able to have a solid foundation with our own mental health uh, and the just the wellness habits that we establish for ourselves, then how can we help the rest of the community? Lillian Navarro Reynolds is a physician's assistant at OHSU. I'm thankful to all the people who keep going to work to stock the grocery stores and to um, keep the gas stations going and all of the things that we need um, in order to do what we do. Lillian also oversees first year PA students, including Lily and Victor. And she does so from home with two young kids who are homeschooling. I empathize with the fatigue of isolating and I'm very thankful that, that people power through and make sacrifices not seeing their loved ones and staying home. Everyone here agrees things will never be the same after this Thanksgiving for better or worse. The hope is we take the, the better and we keep it and, and we discard the worse as we uh, move forward. It's a hope they are all thankful for. Catherine Cook. Yeah, happy Thanksgiving to everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for having us. KGW News. Happy holiday. Certainly thankful for those workers. All right, the time is 512 here. Let's get to your forecast with Chris McGinnis live at home and fewer people gathering headed out this year, Chris, but the weather is also looking pretty quiet too. Uh, it is. Yeah, we do have a couple hiccups as we look forward to our, our weekend forecast. So we'll walk you through those in a second. First off, the, the clouds and the showers that we had yesterday. The showers are pretty much over with uh, for today and the cloud cover will thin out a little bit as well. So optimistically, I think we'll see a few sun breaks today. Future cast at lunchtime shows lots of clouds west of the Cascades, east of the Cascades. Better chance for a good deal of sunshine today. But I think even on the west side, uh, we're going to see those cloud cover, the cloud cover break up a little bit and uh, finish our day with a few sun breaks. Of course, the <laughs> with the sun setting as early as it does now, um, you get the idea. We have a very limited window of uh, opportunity for some sunshine, but I think we will see some. One of the things we're watching for tomorrow is fog development. Look at that in the I-5 corridor tomorrow morning. Friday could be a tough forecast because I think parts of the Willamette Valley may stay socked in with the fog, while the beach, the Cascades, and Central and Eastern Oregon clear out. Of course, we're watching for that chance of rain coming in early Saturday morning as well. All right, temperature-wise, today up near 50, maybe 51 in the valley. Overnight lows tonight dipping down into the 40s. And then a quick look at tomorrow's forecast. And what I wanted to point out was note how the temperatures in the valley are model keeps Portland, Salem, and Corvallis in the 40s. Galen, tomorrow that is strictly a function of the fog maybe not burning off. So it doesn't, if it doesn't, it could be a really chilly day on Friday. We do have some showers on Saturday morning. Sunday looks good, rain Monday, and then a big change in the weather pattern. Several dry days, we think, coming our way next week. Galen? All right, Chris, thank you so much for the update. Now, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade kicks off in less than an hour here, but this year you'll have to watch the floats from home. We're going to break down all the changes you can expect to see. Plus, a Thanksgiving meal brings friends and family together, but some of that holiday food can be dangerous for your pets. So we verify answering your questions about what part of the feast is safe for your furry friends to enjoy. Hi, my name is Jennifer and I live in Rockwood and this year I am thankful that I'm able to be thankful because even on the hardest day, the toughest times, I still have a lot more than many Portlanders. So this year I hope everybody will share some kindness, give each other a little grace, and I hope everybody stays happy and healthy and stays at home. Peace, happy Thanksgiving.